a big market debate powered by Investonomics, an initiative by ICICI Direct. Joining me today is Mr. Sudhi Bandopadhyay, Group Chairman, Indie Trade Capital, and Mr. Abhijit Paul, Founder of MentorshipTraders.com. Welcome, uh, Sudhi. Welcome, Abhijit. Good evening. Thank, and you. thank you for having me. Uh, my first question is for Sudeep. Sudeep, how will you define the markets right now? We have Nifty, Sensex at record highs, Sensex 58,000, Nifty past 17,300. So how do you see markets from here? Well, markets are at all-time high. Globally, I think that's the case. Most markets have touched all-time high or nearing all-time high. I think the amount of liquidity which the global central banks have pumped into their respective economies over the last 18 months had its positive impact on equity markets. Uh, the investors, by and large, have a risk on mode. And uh, the, the multiple pronouncements by different uh, central banks have kind of accentuated that uh, mode. In between, there was, uh, you know, the kind of very, uh, worried uh, investors because of some tantrum, taper tantrum. But I think Jackson Hole clarification, which came last week, that uh, you know, interest rates are not going to go up in a hurry as far as US Fed is concerned. And they are talking about not before end of 22, beginning 23, when they will probably consider uh, kind of bring, uh, considering interest rate increase. I think that added fuel to the fire and markets have, did, uh, markets have done what they did uh, over the last one, one and a half weeks. Now, the question is, where does the market go from here and how should the investors position themselves you know, there can be, you can you can argue either way, you can say market is too high, but I think that's a very, very dangerous uh, uh, you know, hypothesis to work on uh, because at the end of the day, the liquidity is the key. And at this stage, if the market is continuously moving up uh, by the force of uh, liquidity, I think it's extremely difficult and, uh, you know, risky strategy to play the contrarian. While we will definitely advise the investors to be, cautious to pick up good stocks because at the end of the day, if you pick up good stocks, which are, we strongly believe are in a multi-year re-rating phase, you can't go wrong. Yes, you pick up at current levels, market may do some profit taking uh, next week, market may consolidate it at this level uh, for some time. But if you have uh, as an investor, one year kind of horizon at least, I think you're fine if you're picking up good quality stocks. Abhijit, what uh, do charts of Nifty and Bank Nifty say currently? I mean, Nifty at record high, Bank Nifty is still facing a bit of challenges, uh, still trying to move up. So what do chart indicates? Yeah, that's true. In fact, Nifty has been outperforming the Bank Nifty uh, by quite a bit of margin for sure. See, the, the best pickup came for the Nifty once it took out that 15,916 came on. Since then, it has been so steady, no hiccups at all. And now it has taken out the 17K and it's not even looked back. Um, we have a big breakout on the weekly charts. And uh, if you take a look at the way the sectors have played out, you'd see that uh, barring from IT, and I think real estate is, is, is up close to 10% this week, most of these sectors are 3 to 5%. And that's a sign of the strength, the support of these sectors coming in. When the large cap ITs are slowing down, Reliance picked up beautifully at the right time. So the sectoral rotation has been pretty well. It suggests and implies very clearly that we are in an emphatic strong uptrend. And when we are in an all time high, it's very difficult to predict how far uh, prices can go. Nothing is too high. It's very likely that it's going to inch further up. Uh, from a medium term point of view, I'm looking at close to the next level is around 18,900 and then 19,600. These might look like, yes, far fetched from right now because we've moved too much too soon. Yes. And yes, you will be a little bit scared. Uh, prices has gone up too much. It uh, doesn't make sense to buy right now. Let's wait and buy at a lower price. Yes. Um, but you might miss the bus. And I'm sure many definitely have missed it. So definitely look to buy on a dip. Uh, the psychological levels of 17K is the first level. 
and the big breakout this 15916k in case we get a meaningful drop then as long as 16k lives i think the chances of further upsides towards the levels that i mentioned stands strong uh sudeep so sir uh you you just spoke about that one has to be cautious and look at quality stocks uh, you know investing at these high levels in the market but quality is coming at uh, it coming with expensive i mean the valuations of the stocks are 60 times or uh, 50 times is it same to really invest at those valuations well uh, you know a lot of companies are showing stellar growth and you know multiple is a function of what kind of growth the stock can give and if the growth is coming and which is uh, real in some cases companies are really growing fast and obviously india uh, offers a huge opportunity so i have no hesitation in recommending a good quality stocks even at a higher multiple provided you have a slightly longer time horizon you know if you're talking about one month two month it's very very difficult to predict what will happen to a high beta stock however uh, if your time horizon is a bit longer i don't think you need to worry i'll give you an example let's say you know today there is a lot of excitement on the insurance stocks particularly life insurance stocks now if you look at life insurance penetration in india it's about 3% of gdp which is abysmally low even you compare with forget the you know western nations even if you compare with some of the uh, smaller asian peers asian countries so there is a significant growth opportunity for life insurance companies nimble efficient life insurance companies in india and uh, you know they just scratching the surface so what growth they achieve is a function of how they move ahead how efficient they are how you know organically and inorganically they grow how uh, they can ramp up their distribution mechanism the need for insurance is uh, once again have been reiterated post this covid and you know loss of life so i think the need has been established very very clearly in the minds of people also which was not there earlier and uh, 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 obviously there is a genuine uh, requirement for insurance now insurance not only helps uh people to cover their life or assets it does also help infrastructure which is again a crying need of the uh, country so it's a win win for all so if you are investing in a life insurance company at a high multiple i don't think there is anything wrong provided the company is good management quality is good and uh, you know you definitely see a growth trajectory for that business and the company I mean, you spoke about different sectors performing quite well. I mean, metal we all know about it. Real estate has started performing. Capital goods is one of the sectors which is still lying low, but it is expected with the kind of push that government is now giving on the infrastructure. Uh, it is expected that capital goods space will look up. What do charts of the capital good index say, and which are the best stocks uh, that you like on the charts? Yes, uh, definitely. In this move of the market, not only has been uh, the sectoral rotation played out well, but it's been very stocks by specific days also. Larsen and Tubro, uh, to name one, uh, in, in the in the uh, in the long term charts looks phenomenal. And yes, it's it's about matter of time that they should pick up. But uh, the point over here is um, relative out of performers vis a vis relative under performers. You know, we would like to think that. um okay the market is at all time high this is the pocket that has not moved up so this will move up i do not actually think in those lines and i would suggest not to think because if in a good market you are not doing so well are you trying to do a catch up beam probably yes in the future but you will notice that the market has not hesitated to pay a premium to expensive stocks and when i say expensive it can be fundamentally expensive or it can it can be price wise on the chart stretched so be it and we we've seen the way it stocks have moved up and we've seen how real real estate stocks have picked up right now and itc is still there so yes someone will think that okay the day itc moves maybe that's the time the market will top top up but the stock is taking its own sweet time um, even within the sector i do not think that capital goods uh, most of them have not moved so well so let's go there but that's not the case if you look at the banking the private sector has picked up well the psu banks no not so good right and that's why the bank nifty is a little far off from its all time high the moment sbi starts to pick pick up it, it's just a matter of time so even if we get the sector right it's very important to also get the stock right uh, so i would all always say that uh, you know within the sector go with the horses which are right in front and it has 
participated with the market on the upside. So best pick in your cap capital good space would be LNG, yeah? Yes, by far, yes. So then what's your uh, view on the banking space, BFSI as a whole now? Uh, uh, banking is one thing which has been, uh, uh, you know, a little bother uh, for the markets. I mean, private sex doing, uh, private uh, banks doing well, but PSU not doing well. When PSU doing well, private not doing well. I mean, how? When do you expect all the banking space to come out of this, uh, uh, you know, deep uh, 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 challenge? I mean, they have lots of challenges to face. Uh, still, uh, still, still far away from uh, what is expected from them. I agree. I think there were a lot of challenges for the banking sector, uh, particularly you know, in a COVID kind of a scenario where uh, the, the, the country goes into a lockdown, the economic activity stops. Obviously, the lenders will be under pressure. Whether you know any sector uh, gets under pressure or not, the lenders will obviously get under pressure, and that's pretty much got played out. Uh, unfortunately, prior to this COVID, we had this uh, you know, kind of slowdown in the economy that also did affect. Uh, and impact the balance sheet set quality of the lenders. Now, a uh, uh, couple of things have happened which we strongly believe will change the complexion of this entire uh, sector. One is, I think, the, 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 the insolvency, bankruptcy uh, uh, courts and process have been streamlined quite a bit. Yes, unfortunately, it has taken more time than it was expected, but I think things are slowly uh, but surely falling in place. And we probably will start seeing a lot of realization coming through the uh, insolvency process in the near future. Now, remember, most of these assets which are uh, being talked about uh, and which are subject to these insolvency courts and insolvency process, they have been completely written off in the books of the lenders. So these recoveries will straight away uh, uh, have a positive impact on their profitability and the return ratios. The second thing is, uh, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, the second wave also had an impact after the first wave, but to a great extent, at least the stronger balance sheets and the larger players have kind of absorbed that impact within the first quarter of the current fiscal, which the results are behind us. So we believe that the, from, from the Q2 or at least Q3 onwards, the asset quality impact on the balance sheets of the lenders will start getting uh, uh, minimized. You know, the impact will be minuscule. Uh, so the entire discussion around asset quality and uncertainty around asset quality will probably gradually uh, move. And if that happens, I think there is absolutely no reason why even PSUs, uh, where there is a deep value, there is absolutely no doubt. Some of the PSU banks are even today quoting at below the book and the whole question mark whole doubt is is the book right because will there be further asset quality stress now once that goes away i see no reason why they should not start moving up in tandem with the private sector lenders which has happened to an extent and now whether it's an icici or an, or, or, a, or an hdfc or a kotak or in the sim they have moved up i'm not saying they will not move up from here on but SBI amongst the PSUs have also moved up, but there are a whole lot of other uh, larger PSUs like Bank of Baroda, Canada Bank and all. I think time will come sooner than later when these stocks also will start moving up and add momentum to the BFSI index and BFSI stocks. Other point I want to make, sometimes the NBFCs are not looked carefully by the market. Uh, I'm not saying market, but, hey, but they're not carefully looked at by the market like gold loan companies. They, they, they took a severe beating because the asset quality came down. But the issue is this asset quality is a, uh, you know, you can say accounting or a technical issue because they are holding gold as security. They're not going to book losses on those uh, asset quality dips. It will come back. They will recover the money. So, uh, you know, sometimes the market uh, kind of exaggerates the uh, uh, kind of challenge and uh, we probably uh, are towards the side of caution. We will see the BFSI as a space coming back sooner than later. Abhijit, what do you like in the banking space? Well, um, ICICI Bank, um, Axis Bank, HDFC Bank, SBI, Kotak Bank. Amongst the private sector banks, Kotak Bank has been a relative, uh, relatively underperforming for the last two to three months. That stock is trying to pick up pretty far off from its all-time highs. Now, we should remember that from the 16K breakout to where we stand right now, banking has not played a big role. Uh, selective banks have. And within them, ICICI Bank definitely is the one which 
hit the uh, all time high first and it was the one to lead from the front hdfc bank picked up later um so yes icici bank definitely axis bank phenomenal breakout on the charts so that stock also looks like one which is likely to stay we also have to remember this point that banks bank nifty attributes to the maximum weightage in the overall markets and without their let's say with half of their help the index is where it is right now so when the others pick up of course the index will get this support we need to understand that it is extremely stretched on the charts and they will go through some phase of price drop and if the index has to manage itself up there there has to be some uh, some sec sectors which will support it like a relay race you know you you run a certain distance you give it to someone and he takes it further from there so yes this pocket of banks are uh, definitely one should look at um i would definitely if, if you ask me uh, within the private sector i'll go with icici bank and on the charts by far within the psu sbi stands out way better than the rest means i'll probably only invest or trade sbi only and for forget the rest even if you look at uh, a five month a five year even a 10 10 year charts the output performance is of sbi is significantly higher so psu bank there's only one bank for me on the charts say state trade bank rest i would go with uh, icici Uh, so deep sir uh, the kind of uh, disruption that we are seeing in china do you expect uh, that to be beneficial for india and see fiis moving from china to india well i think it's already happening you know there are two three things which are uh, happening one is definitely there is uh, china plus one yeah which is lot of these uh, you know uh, uh, so uh, guys who source commodities materials and products from china they're looking at an alternate uh, uh, base as well uh, so china plus one so they will continue sourcing because they can't disrupt their entire production cycle or the customer base so they will keep taking from china but they will also add probably in india or some other appropriate geography to their sourcing uh, list the other is china minus some people are looking at completely exiting china as far as manufacturing and other things are concerned and moving to other appropriate geography like india <clears throat> so now these two are definitely having a positive impact on multiple sectors whether it's chemicals and specialty chemicals we have seen it getting played out in the market in a big way over the last what 6 8 12 months uh, it's getting played out to an extent in the pharma it will get played out in multiple other sectors wherever this substitution is possible now this definitely makes indian companies in these particular sectors where china plus one or china minus will benefit Uh, attractive for the uh, uh, FPIs, FIIs, and all. The second issue, which we must understand, which is happening, is over the last couple of months, I think there are a lot of policies which the Chinese government has taken, which is, I mean, uh, you know, very difficult to explain the rationale uh, and the reason for such policies, which have destroyed trillions of dollars of value uh, in some of these uh, uh, sectors where these policies have been taken. whether it's education whether it's entertainment whether it's uh, you know gaming whether it's multiple sectors now this has created a significant concern amongst a large bunch of investors and now remember this uh, probably to the who's who of the world investing community who have significant exposure in china i have seen over the last few weeks not because of any economic reason just by government fiat a part of their fortune disappear part of their wealth disappear now this creates significant dissonance and i think uh, india should benefit because at 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 at, at some uh, level uh, they still believe that uh, there is a rule of law which does uh, work in india and they will like to uh, uh, invest in a country like india as opposed to you know uh, places like china so you know this is real and people are talking about it let's see how we can kind of uh, hold on to this confidence or enhance this confidence of the investors and benefit out of it i think we are uh, as as india as a country and indian capital markets is in a very very sweet spot uh, we have to uh, nurture this we have to work towards maintaining uh, that good vibe and one of the steps i must mention here that you know governments rethink and uh, kind of walking back on that retro tax was a very good step and timely step so let's hope that there are more uh, initiatives 
all parties concerned, whether it's the companies, whether it's government, whether it's you know multiple other, uh, uh, I would say the market infrastructure related companies, which will include SEBI, which will include the depositories and exchanges, which facilitate investments by FPIs, FIIs. I think we should work on that actively, and I hope we do that. Abhijit, there are three stocks that are best placed on the charts. Well, now you've asked me the right question, but in the wrong, but at the wrong time because we have such a strong move. And on the charts, when we trade, we buy at a certain price, and we like to protect our losses with the help of stop loss. What will happen is any stock that we buy at this juncture, the difference from our entry to the stop loss, the, the recent lows are so far off that the trades in terms of the risk reward actually doesn't make sense. Now our mind will think, okay, then let's look for those stocks which have not moved. Yeah. Uh, Kotak Bank has amongst the uh, big bankings are the ones are the one which is just starting to pick up. So that's one we can look at. I don't know when ITC will move, but hopefully the stock gives us the big break breakout, and I'm I'm quite sure that it's going to give us that that move. Um, real estate is one definitely one should look to buy on a dip. DLF Godrej Properties, uh, Obera, Shobha um, looks pretty good, um, but I wouldn't suggest to chase the market at this juncture. Um, a short term consolidation is very much on the cards. Abhijit, your advice uh, to the newcomers in the market. I mean, we had a rush of people, new investors who are entering the stock markets. Uh, what would you advise them? Well, we always need them uh, because they are the one who loses the money the fastest. And uh, they are the one who will uh, make the others who are experienced enough, who have lost before, a little bit of profits. Well, um, first and foremost, um, I'll take the opportunity to tell you that I train thousands of people to trade for a living. And on a daily basis, I interact with so many people who are part of my trading community. And uh, um, they all have this rush to make a lot of money very quickly. And definitely stock market is not the place. Uh, social media, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, has made it look very simple. It's like a coffee vending machine. You go, you put the cup, you press the button, you get a cup of cappuccino, that it doesn't work this way. So for you, if you're not prepared enough, if you're not knowledgeable enough, of course, you don't have the experience. That is for sure. You might have read six books. You might have done seven courses. You might have done one month, two months of paper trades. You might have read all the newspaper, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't have the real experience. And what the real experience teaches you, no course, no book, no mentor can teach you. So the first and foremost thing that I'll suggest is please don't rush. There's no hurry. The market's not going to go anywhere. It's going to give us a drop, a correction. You will get chances. So first and foremost is get the confidence in the market. And these are very easy grounds. In this market, close your eyes, pick up a sector and some good stock. The chances, the odds are in your favor that you'll make money. And you'll feel that, oh, okay, I'm, I'm good at it. Just wait for the first drop. The first drop comes and 90% of the fresh ones will be, oh, okay, this is, this is, not, a, this is not what I thought. <laughs> so don't rush. Um, give yourself nine months to one year time. That first one year will be more of my preparation. Take a small capital, open an account, keep on learning. Uh, try to improve upon yourself check week by week or month by month how well you're doing and try to have some consistency in various different states of the market. Now the state is uptrend. So most of us will easily make money. Once the market comes down, the change, the state will change. Defensive will play a role. Banks will take a hit. So the, so the scenario of the market might change. So you have to check whether you are consistent in that change or not. Or else when the market's going up, I'm making money. When the market's coming down, I'm losing money. Then you're in the mercy of the market. So learn, educate yourself, because most of them just watch three, four YouTube videos and they start to trade. And within a month's time, their capital is gone, guaranteed. So learn, educate yourself, start small, scale up slowly, and please give yourself some time. I have mentored people from the age bracket of 17 to 69. And uh, the ones which have done good, 
many of them have left their jobs and they're trading and in investing for a living are the ones that they stuck to it for at least a year so please do not hurry sabeep sir your advice to the new comers <laughs> so i think after listening to abhijit i was also thinking i think the right advice to newcomers and i believe me there are quite a lot of them coming to the market with the excitement which market has created over the last uh, 15 16 months after the drop in uh, you know march april may uh, there has been basically a one way upside uh, in the market and it's happening globally and people are getting excited seeing the global markets indian markets and they are coming in droves so my advice will be you know you have to give time in the market that's please don't think of market as a casino or a coffee vending machine uh, you have to give time to the market but more important is either you study and understand the market i mean it's not rocket science you don't need a phd to understand market but you need to spend time either you do your own research and understand the market and then uh, uh, take advice and do or you trust the experts work through a pms work through a mutual fund work through something uh, or trust your advisor and don't play by blind don't uh, you know hear some tips in the lift or the lobby or uh, you know in the water near the water cooler and start buying stocks that is sure short recipe for disaster today you may have made money because you know as 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 we are all saying you touch anything it's gone up so you know what is a great deal but corrections will come it has to come it will come i mean and that's not bad market will see correction and that's an opportunity for buying a stocks but you should not get wiped out you should not panic and if you have bought good stocks please be patient you will make your money thank you sudeep and thank you abhijit for your time it was pleasure speaking with both of you thank you so much thank you